Connectedness falls into that relationship building domain, but you'll hear us today talk about connectedness in a lot of ways as this uh, connector theme. It, um, I mentioned in the pre-show to, uh, to Jim and Nicole that it's sort of like a really great pair of blue jeans. It changes and goes with whatever theme you've got. So it can feel strategic. It can feel maybe even, it can feel very influential. There might even be aspects of connectedness that help you really get things done uh, through that executing piece. But really, um, the way that we describe it and the way that we classify it in terms of leadership, it is about people. It's about that relationship building place. Uh, the definition of connectedness is that everything happens for a reason. It's a, a sureness um, and an ability to see and imagine the purpose behind things happening, even if you don't exactly understand the things themselves. So if you think about it that way, it's a lot of, uh, it, it's, it's not necessarily an, an attraction to ambiguity, maybe like ideation or uh, adaptability might be. It's more an attraction to larger mystery that you can ground in purpose. Um, and some people might call this uh, the collective unconscious. Others might call it uh, spiritual. Um, I remember being in a session that I was teaching once where the person who read their connectedness in their top five was actually kind of offended by how spiritual it sounded because it is, um, in many cases, it can be about connecting to things without necessarily being able to see them, which when you say it that way, it does sound almost religious even. And I asked her, you know, why do you, why do you struggle with this? And she said, well, I, I, I'm not religious at all. In fact, she said, I'm, I'm absolutely an atheist, but I'm an economist. I said, tell me more about your economist, how you define yourself as an economist. She said, I believe and I know with certainty that whatever I do is going to have an equal and opposite reaction. And she almost sounded, I mean, she's talking about economics. She's also referencing uh, physics. And I think that um, the, the commonality behind that and the real definition of connectedness is the ability to see the world and respond to the world as if it is a giant system. System. Now, that system might be spiritual, it might be religious, it might be economics or, or physical or about that physical scientific world, but whatever it is, it is an awareness of the responsibility it brings to the system that you're in. Uh, people with high connectedness are considerate, they're caring, they're accepting. Oftentimes we talk about connectedness as bringing a calmness. And I think that calmness can come from sort of a, a realization that whatever's going on in the moment is only part of the moment. And that that is that moment is going to lead to something bigger, whether that's into the past, into the future, or into something even bigger that we can't all comprehend. It sounds a little bit fuzzy, and I think that that's the beauty of connectedness: is it doesn't have to be black and white. Uh, Kurt Liesfeld, one of my favorite um, strengths uh, strengths people in the world, had connectedness and analytical. And I, I think these are two themes you could contrast. Analytical is about show me the proof, help me understand the hard facts, whereas connectedness is about there's a connection there, even if you can't describe it. And so these themes absolutely could exist together, but sometimes it's easier to, to contrast that. So um, as I was going through connectedness and thinking about how to define it, the one theme that kept popping up for me was ideation as being similar. And I wanted to be sure that we don't confuse people on the definition of, of both of these. Ideation, of course, is a strategic thinking theme, but it is about finding links between seemingly disparate phenomena, being able to say, hey, there's a piece of that story that reminds me of a piece of the other story. And I can see those connections where other people can't. The difference is I think connectedness also sees those connections. In fact, if you listen to season one, you'll hear Mary Sue talk about her connectedness as being like a series of grids and lines that overlays everything. She can see how people and events are connected. Uh, the difference is I think ideation creates on top of that. Ideation uses that connection as a starting point for bringing something that hasn't been there before. I think connectedness is a little bit more contemplative and maybe a little bit more people focused. So connectedness uses those connections that it sees between people, between events, between ideas, um, between experiences to really be present with, with other humans. You absolutely could have them both, um, uh, and but they do come from slightly different places. Let's talk about what this looks like as uh, as a leader. So, if an if as an individual, connectedness means for you, my purpose has a reason. Then, as a leader, it could be 
our work makes a difference. Sort of that, that singular individual contributor versus how could this benefit somebody else? I think about a leader with high connectedness as being a wise big picture advisor, somebody who can zoom out beyond just what's right in front of us and help a group of people see something bigger, some sort of um, larger or maybe more long-term impact that they're driving toward. It can be, uh, for a leader, it connectedness brings a calming presence, perhaps insight into purpose, into reaction, into results that otherwise would not be there. If you are a leader with connectedness, find ways to communicate those connections that you see, even if it's not obvious. Don't be afraid of um, helping people see things that to you might seem a little bit out of left field or a little bit strange. I think a lot of the the value of connectedness is that other people don't have it <laughs> and, and that you can help people understand perhaps and lean into where they are right now by giving it some perspective. So what questions can you ask that expand other people's thinking? What specific examples of connection or of purpose can you illuminate? What can you shine a spotlight on? What are you noticing or feeling? Um, give yourself, find a way through, through studying, through meditating, through talking out loud. Find whatever your best way is of bringing that awareness out of your soul and into your words so that you can help demonstrate that kind of connectedness in a way that benefits other people. I think the benefit you're really looking for is um, maybe putting them at ease, maybe expanding the creativity or even the productivity of other people. Uh, and if you've got that as your goal, then you can use connectedness to really say, how do I make um, this understanding of every person, every project, um, every, every good deed even, uh, how do I take the fact that I can see that that all is connected and help other people see that as well. I, I have connectedness number six in my life and in and I in many cases it feels a lot more logical than than mysterious. I understand that if I shut off a light in my office when I'm not there that at the end of the month that's going to affect the electric bill. It's going to be smaller. So it doesn't have to be this morning I was coaching a leader who did not have connectedness and uh, almost disparagingly referred to it as the yoga incense uh, hippie theme. <laughs> and I didn't tell her that I had it number six or that I was burning incense at the time and doing yoga. But um, I think a lot of the times it does get a little bit of a a mysterious flavor. It doesn't have to. It's also uh, the ability to have maybe some logical, some sensical, some almost black and white examples. And that's a great perspective to bring forward as well. Remember that connectedness is not positivity. It's not just your job to make people happy. I think it can be your job as a leader to offer perspective, even if that perspective doesn't in the moment make somebody happy. Um, it, anchor, anchor your connectedness to your values or to the values of your organization. What is it that you want people to connect with? Because you can probably understand a much bigger picture than other people can. You can see a lot of potential or a lot of purpose, or you can sense that it's going to be. I think that there's a part of connectedness that isn't just about what's proven and what's already happened. It I have a good friend of mine who who actually told me that we should be in a great relationship together because because we're meant to. And she's got very high connectedness. And that was all she could say. She couldn't back it up with anything else, but it led to a great relationship. So I think use that connectedness, use your intuition and ask yourself, what is it that you really want people to to anchor around? Um, maybe it's Maybe it's, and again, that we're talking about it almost as an influencing theme. Maybe it's to serve the people that you're with. Maybe it's their own health, improving their own well-being, um, understanding themselves better. Um, think about what is your what is your goal? Where do you want to take somebody? And then how can you use the gift of perspective to help get them there? If you want to think about goals as a, as a leader, there's four main ones that we talk about. Uh, the needs of followers. Your followers need trust, stability, compassion, and hope. I'll just talk a little bit more about how connectedness, specifically leaning into and investing in connectedness, could serve these four purposes. And then we'll get to hear from Nicole about what this means to her. 
So a leader with connectedness might use this theme to build trust by individualizing your reassurance. How do people need to hear your perspective? Ask yourself, how, do, how does each individual that you interact with best hear? in general? Do they need facts and figures? Do they need one-on-one -on -one time? Do they need to go out and try something on their own? How is it that you can really make sure you are speaking the language that they speak in order to get through to what they need? I think that's going to build trust over time. A leader with connectedness could provide stability by helping expand others' horizons beyond present chaos. How can you keep people's focus on the long term? How can you keep people's focus on a bigger plan? Now, if that bigger plan for you includes you know, previous lives or, or the future or the past, I think stability is helping people see that, um, that wherever we are right now is, is going to be a part of something bigger. And so I think, how can you think about some great questions that help other people have that perspective? A leader with connectedness could show compassion by learning other people's individual stories. What brought them here? What were some of the big moments in their life that, um, that led them to where they are today? That will feed your curiosity. It'll feed your connectedness. And I think it'll feed your ability to truly individualize and connect on a compassionate level with your followers. And finally, we get to talk about hope. Really, hope is, is the belief that tomorrow is going to be better today and that I have the ability to make it that way. So I just encourage you with connectedness to say, how might today, what we're experiencing right now, lead to an improvement on, to, on tomorrow? How might a good today lead to a better tomorrow? Show up in hard places and ask great questions. Uh, put yourself in the space of teams who are struggling. Put yourself in a family who needs help. Um, be there to, to serve where service is most needed. And show up with curiosity. Show up with perspective. Maybe just even show up. Uh, I think that connectedness doesn't need to have an answer, but it can ask some really great questions.